Hi there, welcome to this Alchemist Chemistry A-level video looking at buffer calculations, specifically those involving weak acids being mixed with salts. Since these buffer solutions are being produced using a weak acid, we can manipulate the Ka expression for weak acid dissociation in order to calculate the pH of a buffer solution, for example. Let me quickly talk you through the Ka expression first of all. This is an equilibrium expression all about understanding how well a weak acid will dissociate hydrogen ions in solution. So Ka stands for the acid dissociation constant, and it's equivalent to the hydrogen ion concentration and the conjugate base concentration formed by the dissociation of weak acid divided by the concentration of the weak acid itself. Now, we assume for a weak acid in isolation that the concentrations of hydrogen ions and conjugate base ions formed via that dissociation are the same as the weak acid dissociates into equal proportions of hydrogen ions and conjugate base A minus ions, respectively. That won't be the case, however, with a buffer solution. So unlike a weak acid in isolation, a buffer solution has some salt dissolved into the weak acid. And that's going to massively increase the amount of conjugate base present as that salt dissolves and dissociates conjugate base ions into that solution. So we no longer assume that H plus and A minus are the same, equal to each other. In fact, they're actually very unlikely to be exactly the same. And we've got a large quantity of weak acid and conjugate base present approaching an equimolar solution. So this solution begins to behave like a buffer. And our calculation method will reflect that fact. So I'm going to take you through two different calculations involving buffer solutions. The first is going to be how to calculate the pH of a buffer. I'm going to show you first how to rearrange the K expression to find that value. And secondly, take you through a model example with data provided, show you how to accurately calculate the pH of a buffer to two decimal places. If you want to calculate the pH of a buffer solution, we need to know the hydrogen ion concentration of that buffer solution. That's because pH is equal to the minus log to the base 10 of hydrogen ion concentration. So we need to manipulate this K expression to make hydrogen ions the subject of the equation, and then we can carry on with our process of calculating the buffer solution pH. So here's our K expression. K over weak acid is equal to H plus times A minus over HA. Now, if we multiply both sides of the equation by the concentration of weak acid or HA, that will remove the division from this side and multiply Ka by that value, leaving us with Ka times HA is equal to H plus times A minus the conjugate base concentration. Now, if we then divide both sides of the equation by the concentration of A minus or conjugate base, that will remove this multiplication of A minus from this side and divide this side by A minus, leaving us with the hydrogen ion on its own as in, terms of, in terms of concentration. So hydrogen ion concentration would therefore be equal to the Ka value times the weak acid concentration divided by the concentration of A minus. Now many textbooks simply quote this rearrangement, but I thought I'd show you it from first principles because it's better to do these things on the fly rather than relying purely on memorization uh, just in case the memory becomes corrupted, as it were, and you make a copy error. And if you don't know what you're doing, you won't be able to rectify that. Let's work through a worked example of an exam style question, step by step, so we can see the steps involved in calculating the pH of a buffer solution. Look at the question we're being asked to calculate the pH of a buffer solution being made by mixing 14 centimeters cubed of 2 mole per litre ethanoic acid, or weak acid, being mixed with 15 centimeters cubed of 1.5 mole per litre solution of sodium ethanoate. Now that's the salt which is bringing the conjugate base, or A minus, to this situation. Finally, we're told that the Ka value for ethanoic acid is 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per litre. So we've already given the Ka value, which we can put into our rearranged Ka expression later on. So the first step in this calculation is to work out the moles of weak acid present. In this case, the moles of ethanoic acid present. Moles is equal to concentration times volume in liters or decimeters cubed. So that's two times 0.014 or 14 over a thousand, giving us 0.028 moles of weak acid, ethanoic acid present in this solution. Next, we work out the number of moles of conjugate base being contributed by the salt. As the salt dissolves, it dissociates the conjugate base in solution. So therefore, the number of moles of salt is equivalent to the number of moles of conjugate base present in this buffer solution. Again, moles is equal to concentration times volume in decimeters cubed. That's 1.5 times 0.015 or 15 over 1,000. And we have 0.0225 moles of ethanoate ions, conjugate base, 
present in this buffer solution. Now you may remember that the K expression actually doesn't work in moles, it works with concentrations. So we've got to work out the new concentration of ethanoic acid and conjugate base ethanoic ions present. That requires us to divide the number of moles by the total volume of solution, because we've got a dilution going on here. We've been adding 15 centimeters cubed of one solution to 14 centimeters cubed of a different solution to make our buffer solution. So we need to work out the new concentration of the ethanoic acid and the ethanoic ions present. So that would be 0.028 moles divided by 0.029 or 29 over 1,000 for the ethanoic acid, giving us a concentration of 0.9655 moles per litre. And for the conjugate base, it's 0.0225, also divided by 0.029 for the new volume of solution, 29 over 1,000, giving us 0.7757 moles per litre. So we've got our new concentrations of weak acid and conjugate base present in the buffer solution because we divided by the new total volume of solution present. At this point, we bring in our rearranged Ka expression, making hydrogen ions the subject of the equation. That's H plus is equal to Ka times the ethanoic acid concentration divided by the ethanoic ion concentration. Literally plug in the numbers we just worked out and we're given in the question for the Ka, the weak acid concentration and the conjugate base concentration. And that gives us a concentration of hydrogen ions of 2.165 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per litre. We're almost there, we're almost ready to calculate the pH of our buffer solution. And finally, pH is equal to the minus log to the base 10 of the hydrogen ion concentration. That's minus log to the base 10 of 2.165 times 10 to the minus 5, equaling 4.66 to two decimal places. That is the pH of this acid buffer solution. Fantastic guys, that is one out of two down. Just before I take you through this second method, a slightly rarer example of a buffer calculation involving salts, just want to say, if you found this video useful, please think about giving it a like. You could always subscribe to the channel. You can even ring the bell. You know, about this content, I do put out videos on a weekly basis and your support is hugely appreciated. You could even share this video or other videos on the channel with friends studying chemistry to help them along as well. And let's keep working on these buffers. So this time, imagine the question set isn't to find out the pH of the buffer itself, but actually to work out how to make a buffer of a known pH. This would be working out how much mass of salt you'd need to add to a buffer solution to give it a known value pH. How would you go about doing this? Well, first thing, you need to work out the hydrogen ion concentration from that pH. That is, hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 10 raised to the power of the negative pH, and that will give you the hydrogen ion concentration as a value. At this point, we can then think about rearranging our Ka expression, but this time we're going to make the concentration of A minus or conjugate base the subject of the equation because that's what we need to work out the mass of our salt later on because all of that conjugate base will have been produced by the dissociation of the salt into solution. Therefore, it came from the salt itself. So there's our Ka expression again. Ka is equal to H plus times A minus over HA. Again, we multiply both sides of the equation by the weak acid concentration, removing this division here and times in this side by Ka, giving us again Ka times HA equals H plus times A minus. But this time, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by our known hydrogen ion concentration, and that will remove it from this side and divide this side by that value, leaving us with A minus, or the conjugate base concentration, is equal to Ka times the weak acid HA divided by H plus, the hydrogen ion concentration. And then once we've got that concentration of A minus, we can think about how we'd work out what mass of salt that conjugate base concentration was generated by. And here's our second worked example of an exam style question. Again, let's read the question together and make sure we understand what we're gonna do. And then we'll go through it step by step and solve this challenging buffer calculation problem. So this time a chemist is planning to make a pH five buffer solution. They add a solid sample of sodium ethanoate, a salt, to a set volume, 400 centimeters cubed, of 0.2 mole per litre weak acid, ethanoic acid. The Ka of the weak acid has been given as 1.75 times 10 to the minus 5 this time. It's a little bit different than last time, which was 1.74, but virtually the same. And we're being asked to calculate the mass of sodium ethanoate needed to make a buffer of pH 5. So our first step is to work out the hydrogen concentration. 
That's calculated by using hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 10 raised to the power of minus the pH value. That's 10 to the minus 5 in this example, equaling 1 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per litre of hydrogen ions present in this buffer solution. We've actually already been told that the concentration of weak acid present is a 0.2 mole per litre solution. Now, as the volume of the system is conserved and unchanged throughout the reaction, there's no dilution going on in this particular example. That means that there's no need to convert to moles and then back to concentration because it will just give us the same number again. So we're going to take that as verbatim. That is the concentration of weak acid, of ethylic acid in this buffer solution. Then we can head straight to our rearranged Ka expression. That is A minus, or in this case, ethanoic ions is equal to the Ka value multiplied by the weak acid concentration divided by the hydrogen ion concentration. Plug in our numbers directly from the information in the question. That is Ka is 1.75 times 10 to the minus five multiplied by 0.2, the weak acid concentration, all divided by one times 10 to the minus five, which is the hydrogen ion concentration, giving us a concentration of A minus or of ethanoic ions of 0.35 moles per litre. So if you want to work out the mass of salt required to make this buffer solution, we're going to have to convert this concentration into moles, and then multiply the number of moles by the relative formula mass of the formula of that salt to give us the mass of salt required. So moles is equal to concentration times volume. 0.35 is the concentration of conjugate base or ethanoic ions present, multiplied by the volume in litres or decimeters cubed, that's 400 divided by 1,000 or 0.4 decimeters cubed giving us 0.14 moles of ethanoic ions present in this buffer solution. And then finally, the mass of the salt required. Mass is equal to moles times relative mass of sodium ethanoate, the formula of the salt, which is 0.14 from the previous section multiplied by 82, the relative formula mass of the entire formula unit, giving us 11.48 grams of sodium ethanoate required to dissolve into that concentration of ethylic acid to form a buffer solution with a pH of 5. There we go guys, two step-by-step -step methods, two different permutations of buffer solutions you might have to tackle in A-level chemistry. I really hope this video has helped your understanding of how to calculate the pH of buffer solutions. If you want to know more about buffers, then please do pick out the card in this video, linking back to my video, explaining exactly what buffers are and how they work. And I'm hoping to do a new video pretty soon on buffers made using strong bases rather than with salt. So do check out that video when it becomes available. As always, guys, it was awesome talking to you, and I look forward to talking to you in the next Alchemist Chemistry video. Take care. Bye now.